a clearer image that you see. Right? You can stand, you know, very far away, but it will only point out the zillion things or the big things that everyone else sees. Right? But then you want to get as close as possible. And the closer you get, what happens? The better you see, the more you can fix. And not only that, but a mirror is so fair that it will point out your faults, but at the same time, it will give you compliments for what you have done right. You all following this? It doesn't just say, you know, we're going to block that beautiful shirt that you're wearing and we're only going to show the sloppy hair that you have. That's not how it does it. It gives you both the compliments as well as it points out the, the, the shortcomings. And that's what our friends are there for. Subhanallah. You know, sometimes, and I've realized this, it's very difficult to give compliments. Don't you think? Generally speaking, people are more ready to share criticism than they are to share compliments. You all following? You are awake here? Okay. But that's what happens. Um, and, and, and that's, subhanAllah, that is very sad. And that's not how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Whenever there was a room for compliment, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it. You know there is a whole book called the compliments of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just about the compliments that he used. Usama, he's the best warrior that we got. Abdurrahman, the most generous person that we know. This person is the most that. And this person is the most this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was a walking, uh, they call it the dictionary of compliments of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went around, and you see good, speak, subhanallah. You see the good, speak, subhanallah. That is how you increase the goodness that you pointed out. Allah, you know, do me a favor. Never belittle words of encouragement that you tell someone else. Because subhanAllah, humans, we are some very funny creatures. Okay? We are funny, aren't we? Um, but we really are. Because subhanAllah, it's unbelievable what can really boost our morals or how someone can really crush our morals as well. Give someone a compliment and they just, subhanAllah, and you know, especially if it's sincere, and it's very, you know, uh, pointed, then subhanAllah, it does miracles to people. It really does miracles to people. Sometimes we make a mistake by the way we compliment our, you know, our kids. They come in, and they have a picture, oh, mashallah, good girl, or mashallah, good boy, you know. That really, that sounds like a cliche. That's not, that's not real. You know, that, that, that does not sound like you really uh, meant it. You know, cliché are usually words and terms, sentences that we use, but we really don't mean it. And I was really surprised when I first came to America. People use a lot of cliché. They tell you how you're doing and they don't even wait for the answer. <laughs> right? They ask you, what's up? And the guy's gone. Excuse me, you just asked a question. Do you want an answer for it? You want to see how am I doing? You want to stop for that? Now, people don't do this. They say, hey, how are you doing? And they just... Did they really mean this question? Did they really mean it? Could have said good morning. Would have been probably more, you know, uh, honest. Could have said hi. They could have said something else. But to ask how are you doing and not even wait for the answer. What are you telling me? I'm asking but I really don't care how. <laughs> this is what you're saying. <laughs> you know? uh, like I say, I was just told that I have cancer. Huh? Okay. And just, but do you get the idea? So sometimes uh, even the way we do this, because subhanAllah, it's an art. You know, uh, the same way that criticism is an art, encouragement is also an art. When you tell someone that they have done specific thing right, it means that you are acknowledging that thing. But if you just give a cliche, oh, that's, you know, a uh, good girl, or oh, that's a good boy, or mashallah, that does not really, uh, it's not very, they, they want me to, t to be quiet. Um, that really does not say, that really does not say much. Okay? So we see this, and we see this, obligation and rights that we have as friends. So friends really impact the way we see ourselves. And the key, is, the key point here is that make sure that you hang around with people that improve, not fool you, but they improve your self-image. You know, self-image psychology, how you feel about yourself. Not necessarily fool you, because sometimes, you know, we tend to fool one another. We give each other false um, uh, uh, assurances or false, or what, but that's, that does not make you a good friend, unfortunately. 
Okay. Our question now is, where do I, as a Muslim, get myself worth from? Because this is very crucial. Where do I, you're telling me that my body should not be speaking for me. You're telling me that where I come from should not determine who I am. You're telling me that my position or my position should not say... You're telling me that being male or female should not say anything about me. You're telling me that being black or white should not say anything. And how do you feel about all these things? Subhanallah, you are in contentment. This is how Allah created me. I am happy with the creation of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I am happy with this. If I were to take pride in being black or being male, and someone asks, Oh, so how long did it take you to be black? Or how, what did they do to become male? Or what did you do to be born in, uh, in, in Africa? Or uh, were you consulted? And this is something that is done by choice? No. So how ignorant of you that you take pride in something that you did not even work for. So proud I'm black. MashaAllah. So proud I am a man. SubhanAllah. You know, in the Quran, Allah differentiates between a man and, fee- and a male. Allah makes a distinction between man and male. Manhood is a position that you attain by your deeds. Where being male is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. Abu Hayyan says, لَيْسَ كُنْدُ مَا كَانَتْ عِنْدَهُ لِحِي أَصْبَحَ رَجُلًا Not everyone that has a beard becomes a man. Okay? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ of the believers are men who have fulfilled the vows that they made or the covenant that they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this sense, that also includes women. But Allah referred to them as rijal. And the term rajul in Arabic is derived from the root verb tarajjala, which means to establish yourself firmly upon principles. And that makes you a rajul, whether you are a man or you are a woman. So Abu Hayyan says, Allah is not talking about someone with a beard. Allah is talking about someone with deeds. That's what makes you a man. Hmm? So anyways, so here we have then, where does a Muslim get this from? Self-worth and self-value, generally speaking in Islam, comes from our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, uh, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have indeed honored the son of Adam alayhi salam. Everyone in this room, male or female, is a son of Adam alayhi salam. And as a result, he's being honored by whom? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin with. Not only that, وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we have preferred them over many of, uh, of our creation. Indeed, uh, true preference, we have preferred them. Okay? You say, well, that includes everyone in this room. I want something, you know, more special to me. Listen to this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants, Allah stands in front of the Kaaba. You know the Kaaba, the house of Allah, very first house that was dedicated to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He stands in front of it and he said, the destruction of the Kaaba is less evil than the killing of an innocent Muslim soul. That includes you, or it includes her back there. Allah would rather have the Kaaba destroyed than you being killed wrongfully. Or be you being killed for no good reason. See how much honor Allah is giving you? Not only that, but once the Prophet ﷺ said, the destruction of the whole dunya is less evil than the killing of one Muslim. You see how much honor Allah SWT is giving you? Not only that, but the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith, that if you make a mention of Allah in an assembly, Allah will make a mention of you in a better assembly. Say, La ilaha illallah. So Allah just made an, a mention of you in a better assembly. Not only that, but the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ And if he makes a mention of me in himself, I make a mention of him in myself. 